The Boeing 757 used to be a pride of the aircraft manufacturer since it instantly gained so much interest from both passengers and pilots as soon as it was introduced. However, the production of this aircraft lasted only 23 years, much shorter than the predecessor 737 family. In fact, the 737 family is now still in development and production. Despite the newer design and the success story of the 757, Boeing decided to cease the project instead of updating it. So why Boeing dumped the 757? Let's find out in today's episode. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be the first to see our next videos. Now let's dive in. The Boeing 757 is a midsize, narrow-body twin-engine jet airliner that was designed and introduced as a replacement for the Trijet 727 on short and medium route. The manufacturer initially intended to build the 757 to become a stretched version of the 727 with the same engine configuration, which consisted of three engines. However, due to the oil crisis after the Yom Kippur War and the fact that Airbus had already performed how efficient an airliner with only two engines could be through the wide body, a 300 introduced a few years earlier, the original idea of a stretched variant of the 727 was soon cancelled and Boeing decided to launch the 757 with the 7N7 prototype. It was developed concurrently with the Boeing 767, a wide-body twin jet, and the two shared design features and flight decks which allowed pilots to obtain a common type rating to operate both aircraft. During its production from 1981 to 2004, it became well known for its versatility, operating both short and long-haul routes. The aircraft was capable of carrying 200 to 295 passengers and was powered by Rolls-Royce RB211 or Pratt and Whitney PW2000 series engines. It was praised for its fuel efficiency and performance, particularly its ability to take off from short runways, which made it a valuable asset for airlines operating at airports with noise restrictions or in hot and high conditions. Until the 1990s, it was the most produced jet aircraft before the 737 took over. So how come a newer designed aircraft had to witness a downward trend in sales, which then eventually turned into a cessation? There are four major factors that led to the end of the 757 production. The first reason, which is quite obvious, is that airlines stopped ordering the 757. Originally developed in the 1970s, the Boeing 757 was crafted to cater to the hub and spoke travel model prevalent during that era, where major airlines, particularly in the United States and Europe, centralize their operations around large hubs and predominantly rely on wide-body aircraft such as the Boeing 747 to service high-demand, long-haul routes. The design of the 757 did not initially prioritize accommodating low-demand point-to-point travel, a role it currently fulfills in modern aviation operations. As the aviation landscape evolved into the early 2000s, Boeing encountered challenges with sluggish sales of the 757. Despite launching a revamped marketing initiative in 2003, the company faced difficulties in replenishing its order book. The aftermath of the September 11 terrorist attacks further exacerbated the situation, leading to a decline in passenger numbers and prompting airlines to refocus their efforts on established routes with proven profitability. In response to the shifting market dynamics post-September 11, Carriers began reducing capacity on various routes and shifted their focus away from expanding services and investing in lower-capacity long-haul flights. This strategic realignment reflected a broader industry trend where airlines prioritized operational efficiency and revenue optimization in a challenging economic environment. The Boeing 757, originally designed for a different era of air travel, found itself repurposed for point-to-point -point routes catering to niche market segments in the evolving aviation landscape. Of course, the unpredictably long-lasting downturn after September 11 affected aircraft sales of all types, not only the 757. Unfortunately, the 757 sales had already declined significantly by that time, particularly in contrast to the Airbus A320 and the 737 series. It would be unbearable for Boeing to maintain the line of a production that was unlikely to receive any further orders. Boeing was already under a lot of pressure at that time. The second reason is about the engines. Some of you might wonder why the lost decade of aviation was over and some demand for the aircraft eventually returned, 
but Boeing didn't try to apply any improvement on the aircraft, for example, a new engine option. The issue arose from the unique combination of a relatively elongated and sturdy single-aisle airframe paired with exceptionally powerful engines, a characteristic almost exclusive to the Boeing 757. It is called the sports car in the sky for this overpowered engine configuration. Consequently, if Boeing sought a newer, more efficient engine, they would need to persuade an engine manufacturer to either create a completely new design or modify and downsize an existing larger engine. Indeed, both the Rolls-Royce RB211 and the original engine option, Pratt & Whitney Pew 2000, are the shrunken versions of the two initially bigger engine models of the two manufacturers. During this period, General Electric was actually developing the GANX engine for the new 787 design, including a version for the 747-8 with a smaller fan. However, the 757 would have needed an even smaller fan than that one on the 747-8. It would be too risky for both Boeing and GE to pay attention to such a hopeless project while slowing down the 787 engine development. GE and CFM actually then developed a smaller engine drawing heavily from the Ginks, known as the Leap One, currently powering the A320neo and the 737 MAX families. Interestingly, the fan diameter of the Leap One Alpha, used in the A320, is nearly identical, albeit slightly larger, than that of the ERB211 utilized in the 757. But even if the engine was introduced in the era of the 757, would it be able to help the 757? The answer is no, because the Leap engine is way less powerful than either of the engine options of the 757. This brings us to the third reason for the eventual demise of the 757. It wasn't just the engines that posed a challenge. The aircraft itself was significantly bulkier and hence much heavier. Comparing it to the A321 highlights this disparity. The maximum payloads of the older 321 and the 757-200 are closely comparable, with the Airbus capable of carrying 25.4 tons or 56,000 pounds, slightly less than the Boeing's capacity of approximately half a ton or 1,100 pounds more. Despite their similar passenger capacities, the two aircraft possess significantly different operating empty weights, resulting in distinct economic considerations. While the 757-200 weighed approximately 58.5 tons or 129,000 pounds empty, the A321 weighed around 48.5 tons or 107,000 pounds, making the Airbus at least 10 tons or 22,000 pounds lighter. This substantial difference primarily stemmed from the 757's design catering not only to hot and high performance, but also a longer range, necessitating the capacity to carry more fuel. Boeing contemplated a shorter variant, the 757-100, during the design phase, retaining the same passenger exit limit as the 757-200. However, given that different variants within the same aircraft family generally share the same wing, it wouldn't have been able to compete effectively with the A321 on similar routes, especially with the weaker engines it would have been equipped with. Consequently, from a commercial standpoint, the A321 appeared to be a more sensible option, and finally, the last point, where Boeing made a strategic decision to continue the production of the 737 rather than the 757. The sustained orders for the 737-NG family during this period, in contrast to the declining interest in the 757, made this choice appear as a logical step forward. However, it is unlikely that Boeing's management had long-term plans to maintain the production of the 737 either. Looking at the timelines, Boeing had announced the halt of 757 production in 2003, with the final aircraft rolling off the factory floor in 2004. Before this announcement, Boeing had introduced the revolutionary 787 aircraft, with plans to have it in service as early as 2008, leveraging new design and construction methodologies. With a target service entry of around 2008 in mind back in 2003, Boeing may have reasonably assumed they would introduce their next aircraft model by that time frame. Given that the 737-NG family was still in production during this period, it is conceivable that this new aircraft would have likely served as a replacement for the 757, drawing extensively from the innovations and designs of the 787. With advancements in techniques and the use of lighter materials, Boeing aimed to adapt this cutting-edge design to capture a portion of the 737 market segment, ensuring scalability and market relevance.